easier if you have two hands. But I'm lucky if I have even one hand today. My sous chef. You. Ice cream is the perfect summer treat. Most people just go out and buy it at the store, but few know the joys of actually making it at home. It's actually way easier than you think. My preferred method is to use our well-tested winning ice cream machine. And I'm partial to deputy food editor from Cook's Country, Morgan Bowling's super easy no-churn ice cream, which is made in our winning blender. Today, we're gonna to take a look at both of these proven at-home methods so you can see which one is right for you. Hannah, let's start with you and the traditional ice cream machine method. All right, sounds good. So all ice cream machines work roughly the same way. You make a loose base, a liquidy base. It can be dairy if you're making a custard style ice cream, coconut milk, which makes super delicious vegan ice cream, or fruit if you want to make a sorbet. So you have this liquidy base and then you chill it. Once your base is nice and cool, you take out your machine and there are two kinds of machines. The first kind is called the canister style. It has a removable canister that you store in the freezer. So you take your cold canister out, you put it in the machine, you pour your base in and you turn the machine on. And the machine turns slowly. It's got a paddle inside that's gently agitating and stirring everything. This is really key. The paddle incorporates some air in there so the ice cream doesn't freeze into like a solid brick of ice. You can actually scoop it out and it gets nice and creamy. And then there's another kind of ice cream machine. This is called a self-refrigerating ice cream machine. These are the ones that have the cooling elements right inside the machine. These are nice because you don't have to take up freezer space to freeze your canister. You can make multiple batches, one after another. But there are two major drawbacks. First of all, they're big. Second of all, they're expensive. We're talking like three or 400 bucks. So we tested six ice cream machines in our ice cream machine testing, some canister style, some self-refrigerating. Not all of them performed well. Some of them made icier ice cream. Uh, others were hard to add mix-ins into. So in the end, we chose a winner from Cuisinart, the Cuisinart frozen yogurt ice cream and sorbet maker. It was super easy to use, made beautifully luscious ice cream, super easy to add mix-ins. It was lightweight. On the smaller side of things, I got it for my wedding eight years ago and it's still working fantastically. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys how to make ice cream at home. I am making a custard one, which means it's a base of milk, cream, and eggs. So, milk and cream, one and a half cups of each. A half a cup of sugar. We're gonna heat this over medium heat for about five minutes. We are looking for a temperature of 175 degrees. While the custard is heating, you also want to whisk together some of the sugar, a quarter cup, and four egg yolks. You don't want the eggs to cook when you add the hot milk mixture to them, so we're gonna temper them by adding a little bit of the milk mixture to the eggs off of the heat and then combining everything back together. So once we've hit 175, we are going to add half of the milk and cream mixture into the egg yolks and sugar, whisking to combine everything, and then combine it back in here. And at this point, I'm going to heat everything again. This time, my target temperature is 180 to 185 degrees. All of this sounds really hard and complicated, and the first time I read the recipe, I was like, what? but it's very few ingredients, and the one thing you do need is time. You wanna make the custard base, you wanna give it the time to cool down, you wanna make sure you have your canister in your freezer 24 hours beforehand, but if you can remember to leave time to do those two things, the activities in between are actually pretty simple. 180, there we go. Turning off my heat, and now I'm gonna pour this whole thing through the fine mesh strainer, into the medium bowl, which is set in the ice bath. The reason you do the ice bath is, just, is to get this cooling down faster. Um, you don't want it sitting outside of your fridge for a long time while it comes down to room temperature, so you can put it back in your fridge. So the ice situation in here in this double layer bowl really just helps it cool faster. Once it's cooled to room temp, you wanna cover it and put it in the refrigerator until it hits 40 degrees. Nice and cold. You need to make sure to leave the time to chill this down. Um, it can take three to four hours, or you can just do it the day before, which is what I did, and um, then you'll be certain it's nice and chilled. But you just wanna make sure that it hits 40 degrees or else your ice cream will be icy and not in a good way. 
I've been there. Don't do it. So I'm going to take the canister out. It's been chilling in here for 24 hours. I feel like a hoarder. I'm embarrassed about my freezer. Don't look. All right, now on to churn our ice cream. This part is so easy. I'm gonna shake up the base, make sure everything's nice and combined. And I'm gonna add my extract at this point. Um, vanilla extract, if you're using extract instead of a pod, we like to add it right before churning so you really maximize that flavor. So I'm adding a teaspoon of that. And then I'm also gonna add some coconut extract because the flavor I'm making today is coconut chocolate almond. I used to work at an ice cream shop. Shout out to Nona's Homemade, South Shore Boston Mass. Out of 40 flavors, this was my absolute favorite. I am gonna add a teaspoon of coconut extract. Extracts are added. I'm gonna shake up my base here. Make sure everything is nice and combined. Pour it in the cooled canister. Here's the paddle. Paddle just perches right in there. And the cover. The cover goes in these grooves here right on the bottom, slides right in. That's it. it. Takes about 15 to 20 minutes. You want to look at the consistency inside. It should look like a milkshake or like frozen yogurt. So you want to see some thickening. And then it's time to add the add-ins. So I have toasted almonds, chunks of chocolate, and dried cherries here. I've never done dried fruit in an ice cream, but that is one of the most fun parts about an ice cream machine. You can make all kinds of weird things in here. A good rough rule of thumb is about two cups of add-ins for three cups of dairy. All right, so we're all done. Everything is incorporated. We've got a thick soft serve-like mixture. So now we just want to scrape it out of the canister into an airtight storage container and then we put it in the fridge to firm back up a little bit. There's nothing wrong with eating it now. You could if you like it a little softer, but I like a little firmer. It's still a little loose. So let's scrape it out into here. All right, so I just showed you how to make the ice cream. I have a batch here that I made yesterday, so let's check out how it came out. Mmm, super delicious. Super smooth and creamy, no ice crystals. Check that out there. It's absolutely delicious. Super fun doing my own flavor and the texture is perfect. And that is really why we like this machine. Great ice cream, super easy to use, great price. But if you don't wanna buy a dedicated ice cream machine, you can also use your blender. Lisa is gonna go ahead and show us how it's done. So I'm here with our no churn method, which uses a blender. This method uses our winning mid-price blender. We actually tested blenders in three categories, inexpensive, mid-price, and high-end. And this model, which is the Breville Fresh and Furious, won against six competitors. And one of the key points that really made this one and some a few others stand out was that they have a slow, low speed, which means it starts out slowly and it doesn't just throw everything to the walls. The other thing we loved about this was a narrow jar. A lot of the blenders that have wide jars just throw everything to the wall and then it doesn't blend. This one also has a rounded bottom and creates a really powerful vortex. So the food gets sucked down to the blade and then travels up and you get a nice consistency. It's about $200, but it's a serious blender. It will do everything, including make no churn ice cream. This ice cream was so good and so exciting. When deputy food editor Morgan Bowling worked on it in Cook's Country, it was the cover story for our August, September 2019 issue. Boy, that was a happy time in the test kitchen. Okay, so I'm gonna make this super easy no-churn ice cream. I'm gonna make the strawberry buttermilk flavor in our mid-price blender. It has eight ingredients total. Most of this is pantry stuff. So it's two cups of heavy cream, a cup of sweetened condensed milk, quarter cup of corn syrup, a half cup of buttermilk, or you could substitute a quarter cup of whole milk, two tablespoons of sugar, a teaspoon of lemon juice, a quarter teaspoon of salt. And then to give it the flavor, this is a third of a cup of our favorite strawberry preserves, which are made by Smuckers. Let's go. It's really easy. You're just gonna get our blender going and add heavy cream. And this processes very quickly. It only takes between 20 and 30 seconds. So I'm gonna turn it on. I'm gonna use the blend setting. So 
So that went really quickly. Actually, it was only about 15 seconds before I could see that I'm getting soft peaks, which is your first sign. And you just want to scrape down the sides, make sure nothing's getting stuck. When you whip cream, there's either soft peaks or stiff peaks that you see called for in recipes. Soft peaks is when it's a little bit squishy and soft, just somewhat firm, but not really hard. When it's at stiff peaks, you really can, it can stand up on its own. And that's just the consistency of how much air is whipped into it and how solid it is. Now all we do, this is super simple, is we just stir in the rest of this stuff. It's very easy. So I'm gonna add my sweetened condensed milk. Got some whole milk here, or you would add your buttermilk here if you were gonna do the strawberry buttermilk. Two tablespoons of sugar, a little bit of corn syrup, tiny bit of lemon juice. It's just one teaspoon of fresh lemon juice. That keeps it a nice fresh taste. It keeps it from getting too sweet salt. A lot of sweet things have a little salt because that makes it, oh, you taste the sweetness a little more. So I'm just giving it a, a light mix together with my spatula. And then we're going to turn it back on in the blender for a couple seconds just to make sure it's thoroughly mixed. And that's almost it. Got my loaf pan. If you have a quart container or something tall, it doesn't freeze as quickly or as evenly. And this just really makes it um, nice and easy. And so you can see it's got a pourable consistency, but it's fluffy. I'm leveling it out a little bit. And now all I have to do is take my third cup of strawberry preserves and I'm gonna put that in and swirl it. with a fork that kind of lets you get in there and move it around the ice cream. And I am done. So I didn't have to cook a custard and chill it down. Sorry, Hannah. <laughs> I didn't have to freeze a canister in advance. I didn't have to do much besides go out and pick up some fresh heavy cream and some preserves. And a couple seconds of blending. I'm putting a piece of cling wrap over it and then you just kind of press gently on the surface so that it's just contacting the surface of the ice cream. And you pop that in the freezer for about six hours and you've got delicious ice cream and that's it. Okay, so I have some of the same flavor, strawberry buttermilk that I made yesterday. Uh, this is our winning ice cream scoop by Zerol. It uses the heat of your hand to slightly warm the bowl and scoop the ice cream. Wow, all right. This stuff is great. It's really creamy. It's not too sweet. It's, it's just perfect. And it's got a really nice fresh flavor that sometimes I think supermarket ice creams really don't have. You can really taste the strawberry. The base is really delicious. And as you can tell, it scoops up really nicely. It's not soupy and it's not icy. All right, Lisa, that was so much fun to watch you make that ice cream. It's so easy, all of the add-ins are fun. I remember when Morgan was testing that recipe and it was a really yes. fun time in the test kitchen. I do think there's still a place though for the ice cream machine for certain people. Um, if you want to really go wild, if you want to do sorbets, if you want to do frozen yogurt, if you want to do more traditional custard recipes with, with eggs in them, that an ice cream machine is definitely still the way to go. Um, that said, if you just want to dabble, if you want to try making ice cream at home and you already have a blender, just try the blender method. Um, both of these can make really great ice cream. Yeah, definitely. If you have a blender and a couple of handful of pantry ingredients, it's great. And it's especially good. My son is allergic to eggs. This is a wonderful, rich, creamy ice cream with no eggs. So it's also good for people with allergies. Well, Lisa, thank you so much for talking ice cream today with me. It was so fun. I had a great time, as always. So for more information on everything you've seen today, including the recipes, check out the links below. Yep, and if you have any ice cream questions, make sure to ask them in the comments, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button.